Dad Saperstein interrupted us with a lesson on the various types of wood. The tree grows, you have part wood, uh -huh. which is hard and dense, and as the tree grows out, the wood is lighter. Uh -huh. And as you get out towards yeah. the bark, they call that sap wood, and it becomes a lighter color. Mm. Yeah, basically what you're going to do is hold the tool in, you, in your left hand. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to take the mallet and you're going to tap across. Okay, here we go. Okay. But once you get the basic hang of it... Uh-oh. I went all you, you off. See, you went, well, oh, no. you went, you went <laughs> a little off, but seconds. you're on the outside. Okay. So you can just come back around and take that And what do again. I need to just angle up a little more? Yeah, you want to turn tighter right towards the bottom of the jaw. And you want to stop right there. Okay. And, and part of it out. is what, you'll get the hang of it. Uh -huh. And once you get used to it, the next step is getting fixed. You have to do this in a time frame that becomes profitable for the price range that you can sell the piece. After the finer details are put in place, the next level of depth and perspective are added. The charring of the wood creates a hair-like shadow on the body of the ram. Finally, a glaze and a coat of paint is added before it's mounted as desired. Stan Saperstein learned his craft the old-fashioned way. He served as apprentice to master craftsmen for several years before he started his own shop. Stan's refined taste and sophisticated carving techniques earned him several mentions in wood carving journals. He diligently passed on all that he's learned to son Eric, who now manages the business. One thing Stan loves is his personal collection of tools given to him by his teacher. They now belong to Eric. This is a, this chest is a round a reproduction of a chest made by Calum Winslow, who was known as the uh, uh, coffin and cabinet maker to the Pilgrims. And this is a, a Connecticut River Valley chest, is is what it's what it's called. This I did recently. This is beautiful. We went on a tour of Switzerland, and I bought the mu 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 uh, music box movement in Switzerland. This is pretty. I love it. So what is this? This is pretty awesome. This is a reproduction of uh, Duncan Fife's first roll top desk. Eric was commissioned in 2001 to construct a gothic table in honor of a slain 9-11 pilot. He may have carved hundreds of pieces, but this was his personal favorite. Captain States was a, a member of a local church that happened to, one of their members happened to catch an article about us uh, that was doing an artist profile, and they got in touch with us about this project that the church needed a credence table. Uh, Captain States was also a woodworker and we found out a little bit about his history and it became like the perfect project in his memory uh, to put in place in a, in a church that, that him and his family were a big part of. When an apprentice is ready to go out on his own, the master awards him with journeyman papers. Eric got them too, from his own dad. What this is, is what's called master's papers. Mm -hmm. Effectively. Um, prior to college degrees, mm -hmm. the trades or the guilds would pass on um, authentication of skills mm -hmm. and certifications in the form of journeyman's papers at the end of an apprenticeship. So this proclaims um, the A, the skill levels, and B, the transition of the shop uh, from my father who's taking the role as, as the retired master to the next generation and it commemorates um, if six generations that this has been passed on from his teacher uh, to him mm -hmm. and then to me and along with it hopefully comes the, uh, or the responsibility comes to pass it on again so hopefully we can fulfill that. Mm -hmm.